to start the receivers. Pull up, oh, pull up, um, oh, you got the, um, images and stuff? Come on. Before we go live, oh yeah, go to, um, uh, uh, Ghana. Come on, we, uh, we live. Yeah, just type in, uh, uh different tribes, uh, yeah, different tribes, uh, yeah. We live? Yeah, come on. Let me see, it's not pulling up, but, oh, I think it is, I think it is. Just gotta Part check the sound. Yeah. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom. Come on. I'm good, good, good. Shalom, shalom. Everybody say live and play. Shalom. GMS State Diligent, shalom to you. Shalom, Mark. Alright, uh, let's, 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 uh, this is part two of um, the title of uh, the Black Jewish Empire of Ghana. That's right, the Hebrew is like that a diaspora, the Black uh, Jewish Empire of Ghana. Now, in part one, um, you noticed that um, we didn't get to Ghana itself, but it was a lead to Ghana. So now, part two, we really gonna get into Ghana and the different tribes of, of um, the different Ghanaian Ghanaian tribes. And, uh, you know, do what we do through the spirit and just it's all about exposure. You know what I'm saying? That's what it's, it's about, you know, to expose. It's, hey, brother, can you look up the word expose? On the animal line right quick. Because, you know, the truth, the, the scripture says that, um, if I can get there right quick. This is Second Ezra's. Uh, you know, hey, how about Shema Shah's spirit? The spirit of Yahweh Shai, I always say this, the spirit of Yahweh Shai is all throughout the earth right now. And the spirit of Yahweh Shai being throughout the earth, it is seeking the elect. It's seeking the elect scattered across the four winds. And when that spirit, you know, which is projected through the light, and that light comes through what? The internet, right? The unicorn, when it hits you and it hits you in, in your pineal gland, it makes contact with your spirit. You awaken, you awaken to your true self, to your to to your power, right? To your nationality, and then you get the concept of what it means to be an Israelite, understanding prophecy, and now you get in, you 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 start your journey, right? Because this is just about the journey of the elect, man. And then if you're part of the elect, regardless of what you look look like, if your spirit is an Israelite spirit and you're part of the elect, then you're gonna start your journey, you know. Uh, this is Second Ezra chapter six, verse twenty-five. Uh, so I guess Second Ezra chapter six. Uh, no, no, Second Second Ezra chapter six, verse twenty-eight. It says, "As for faith, it shall flourish; corruption shall be overcome, and the truth, which has been so long without fruit, shall be declared." Now you got the word um, exposed. The word there exposed. Sloppy. The word there exposed, the verb form, it says to leave without shelter or defense. Mm -hmm. Expose there, lay open, set forth, speak one's mind, explain. From Latin exponere, set forth, mm -hmm. lay open, exhibit, reveal, reveal. publish. Publish, declare. Mm -hmm. yep. It's the similar, it's similar, it's the same thing as declaring. Why it's being made clear, man. What's being made clear is being made clear that the elect out of the nation of Israel, right, are scattered across the four winds. Mm -hmm. And it's being made clear that now it's time, it's high time for them to awake. Just like we rival, we we've awakened, man. Why? Because now I was talking talking, I was talking to the brother 
uh, before we started shooting, we was talking about the next shoe to drop, which we, we believe to be the Race Wars. Yeah. Yep. So the reason why the Race Wars haven't fully started is because the ceiling of the elect, remember the ceiling of the elect hasn't been fully completed. Now, if we know it's completed in the spirit, the spirit yeah. but on the physical level, it's being completed. But we know it's, it's we in the, now, through the spirit, we know we are in the edge of the full physical, mental, spiritual, mental, and physical completion of the election because the race wars, are, we know through the spirit, are right around the corner. Mm -hmm. The setup is nice. The setup is perfect. The tension is there. The spirits... In the in the in the, in, in, in the third heaven are ready to be released upon these people mm -hmm. so they can start losing their minds. Mm -hmm. But we know it's happening. It's gonna happen soon because the Lord said what? You know, He told the four angels to. to you got it. Hey, it out. Revelation seven and verse uh, three, going to the point, uh -huh. saying, "Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our power in their foreheads." That's right. To, to hurt not the earth. Mm -hmm. And those, those, the hurt is talking about with these curses. Mm -hmm. And one of the curses that's going to be laid upon America is the, is the curse of what? Self-destruction from within. Mm -hmm. Which is which those are race wars. You know, if you know anything, the best way that empires have, um, have always taken, taken down other empires was through what? Interjecting uh, a disagreement and malice and having a camp be separated and start to fight with each other, man. And that's exactly what it is. The scripture says that what? Um, a kingdom divided cannot stand. Right. So America is definitely divided. Babylon is divided in multiple groups. Mm -hmm. From Edom, Esau, the so-called white man, right? The devil that the Bible speaks of. Jacob, the 12 tribes of Israel, so-called Negroes, Spanish, and Native Americans. The Moabites, the Chinese, the Ammonites, the Japanese. Uh, the Ishmaelites, the, uh, the so-called Arabs. Um, Elams, you know, so-called uh, Persians, um, Africans, which are uh, the Hamites, mm -hmm. you know, uh, so on and so forth. Even Hawaiian, which is so-called Japhites. So you got all these different groups here in America, and there's super tensions. And when the war breaks out between Edom and Jacob right here in America, everything else is going to fall apart. Mm -hmm. You got something? Matthew 24, mm -hmm. 7, for nation shall rise against nation. Right. And kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. That's right. And nation against nation is exactly what the brother was talking about, mm -hmm. meaning actual nations of people against nation. That's right. All right. Look, I think we stopped at the top of the communities. Mm -hmm. I think that's where we stopped Come. the communities. So we're going to read to the end. Of course, called the book as always. Con. <clears throat> um, the book, of course, is uh, from Babylon to Timbuktu. All right, we're on page uh, 90. Mm -hmm. It says, by what factors can we explain the emergence of black Hebrew hegemony and leadership over the indigenous tribes? The answer is simple. The Jews came into the Western Sudan from Northern and Eastern Africa as a result of a chain of commercial and, persecu and persecutory, persecutory migrations. Salakia. Right, because the persecution, right. as we know, going back to 78 AD, was um, uh, from the Romans, and then uh, later on with uh, uh, the, the Islam persecution mm -hmm. of the sword. Remember, mm -hmm. around 632 A.D. to 710 A.D., when Muhammad mm -hmm. and his people came down into North Africa and slayed uh, not only a lot of um, Hamites and turned them into, uh, uh, into Islam, mm -hmm. but also Israelites that were living there and sure. turned them into Islam. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. It says, it's like it says, the Jews has settled among the most civilized people throughout the ages. They adopted new methods from other people and left their material, educational, and moral imprint among the people with whom they resided. For many centuries, the Hebrews had to employ great physical and psychological initiative. Mm -hmm. They could not afford to be complacent or apathetic. They were hated, so apathy could mean cultural stagnation or death. See, they were what? Hated. It says they were hated. So the nation of Israel is always, is, is, if you, regardless of where you are, mm -hmm. across the four winds, if you're an Israelite, you most likely living in the ghettos and the slums. If you're not and you're living good, mm -hmm. that's, that's extreme jealousy. You're talking about tribal warfare. When you're talking about tribal warfare in the African continent, um, all the different tribes, 
they they fight with each other, man. And a lot of a lot of the tribes that get singled out and that get ganged on, because you would have two heathen tribes that don't like each other, mm -hmm. but they'll come together when it comes to ganging on that Hebrew Israelite tribe to have dominance over them. Mm -hmm. And then one another thing you notice in uh in, in uh, uh in Africa, that continent, especially Western, Eastern, Northern, Northern Africa, the heads of a lot of these nations, the heads of uh, the presidents and all that, most of them are heathens. Mm -hmm. And then the Israelites get suppressed. Now, but when you're talking about economically, the dominance will reside with the what? The Israelite tribes that are located into these places. Because mm -hmm. that's what it is with the diaspora. The diaspora, actually, they're always talking about Africa. No, the people who brought life to the continent of Africa for 1,500 years before the full colonization of Edom Esau were the, were the Hebrew Israelites. Mm -hmm. Because pre, pre Hebrew Israelite migration, Africa was shit. Mm -hmm. 1,500 years of diaspora migration, fleeing from persecution, Africa rose up from Babylon to Timbuktu. Mm -hmm. We're going to go into the Empire of Mali. It's going to talk about it with uh, Musa, uh, Mansa Musa, so on and so forth. And then when you talk about post, post Israelite migration, and you talk about post captivity, what happens post captivity? Mm -hmm. um, um, uh, Africa goes back to being shit. Mm -hmm. So it tells you that the nation of Israel. The scattering of the nation of Israel was beneficial for the rest of the nations, but it was, you know, it was a downfall to us, but it was beneficial for the rest of the nations, right? Our uh, precept brought that last time. This is Leviticus 26 and, uh, Leviticus 26 and 33. It says, uh, no, 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 Leviticus 26 and 17. It says, and I will set my face against you, and ye shall be slain before your enemies. They that hate you shall reign over you. You see that? That's just, that's what I said earlier, right? When you go into these nations, uh, Leviticus 26 and 17, mm -hmm. when you go into these nations, that's what I said, when you go into these different nations, the heathens a lot of times are the rulers of the nations, and the Israelite tribes, you know, that come from the diaspora are pushed to the corners, you know, but they still thrive economically, and they're, they're hated, just like I said. So they know they have to constantly compete and be at the best economically. Because th think about it, brother. How many people out here in America, right? They, they're being scorned for, of, uh, I guess, not being attractive. Mm -hmm. Or they're being scorned for being short. You know, for different things. What is the thing that they always rely on to, to give credibility to their existence? It's the money. money yeah. it's, the, it's, it's the status. It's, it's the yeah. status that comes with the money. money. Yeah. So Israel knew in these places that they needed to keep what that commerce going because with all the hatred, at least they could buy some of the hatred off, you know, and be able to buy pull horse, yeah. you know, right? Because that's the only way. Because yeah. they hate you, but if you got money, you got things that they need, they're gonna want to do trades with you. Ain't going, they're going to think about, okay, as much as I hate them, I can do business with them. Same thing as when um when an Israelite gets with uh, one of these heathens' uh, daughters. That's right. Like, if that normally happens, the heathen can't stand that shit. But That's if right. they if got daughters money. got with LeBron James or something, they're like, oh, shit. That's you know, right. They put it to the side. That's you know, right. So. Money is a defense. Mm -hmm. You get that, Mark Uh, uh, Money is a yeah, defense. Because that's what it was. That's exactly what from Babylon to Timber 2 is, is, is talking about. You got it. Yep. Now read that. Read that part about um, when they said how they were hated, and they, and they needed to uh, pretty much step up financially. Uh, you know, go ahead. It says, uh, let me see. It said they cannot. They cannot afford to be complacent or apathetic. They were hated. Mm -hmm. So apathy can mean cultural stagnation or death. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what, is, what does it say before that? For many centuries, the Hebrews had to employ great physical and psychological initiative. Mm -hmm. They cannot afford to be complacent or apathetic. They were hated. So apathy can mean cultural stagnation or death. Right, so we always had to be a cut above. Mm -hmm. Israel always had to be a cut above. Why? Because we were already getting the short, end, the short end of the stick by not being in our own land, by being in foreign land. That's where you get the word Gentiles, Israelite foreigners. Israelite foreigners got the short end of the sticks and particularly and they're doing the times of the diaspora. So they needed them to be a they have that edge. And a lot of times it came through trades, being merchants, came through trades and acquiring wealth. Mm -hmm. That's how they were able to even sit at a table with the heathens that wanted to kill them. 
So I'm going to read this scripture again. Leviticus 26 and 17. And I will set my face against you, and ye shall be slain before your enemies. They that hate you shall reign over you, and ye shall flee when none pursue of you. So that's the end. That's the uh, 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 sentiment that the heathens had and still have when it comes to the, the land of uh, the land of Ham, which is also known as uh, Africa. Uh, you got that money as a defense? Yeah, come. Huh? Um, this is Ecclesiastes seven and verse twelve. It says, "For wisdom is a defense, and money is a defense, but the excellency of knowledge is that wisdom giveth life to them that have it." Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. That's wisdom right. is the defense, of course. How the wisdom is the ultimate defense. That's right. You know, and then it says, "Because uh, hey, wi um, and wisdom and knowledge will be the stability of thy time." That's right. So wisdom is the ultimate defense. It balances out right. because stability goes back to balance. Right. So if you had to pay a motherfucker, if you knew that somebody was going to rise, was getting ready to uh, one of the Hamites was getting ready to rise up to come and, and, and take y'all down, you probably trying to manufacture, maybe buy somebody else to, to, to kind of like take them down or you would have the funds to, to, to manage to get out of that situation by either buying them off or giving them gifts mm -hmm. you know or having somebody else you know hiring somebody else to take them down or mm -hmm. you know whatever but you Israel had to be cut above and, and was interestingly enough at that verse it talks about wisdom being a defense and money mm -hmm. but then later on it said the excellency of knowledge so That's ultimately right. Like the wisdom and knowledge. knowledge is the That's ultimate right. defense. That's right. Um, going back to here, Shalakia, bring that back up. It says, um, the Jews imported into the western part of Africa a superior, a superior material, mm -hmm. educational and moral culture soon after 300 AD. And this cultural advancement was not duplicated or exceeded until the ascendancy of the Mohammedan leader Mansa Kakan Musa of Mali in 1312 AD. Right, we gotta look him up, of course. You know, and it's sad because they call him um, Mahamudian. That means he followed after the teachings of Muhammad. Exactly. You know, but exactly. who was it? Who was he? You know, because you hear a lot about Mansa Musa, right? But now we're gonna read a little bit of history about Mansa Musa and find out who he was. You know, and then we're gonna, through the Spirit, tell you, you know, show you like. The fact that the man was an Israelite. He was an Israelite, just like the Moors, he was an Israelite that converted to Islam. So, Kakan Musa, the richest man in world history. Today, I would like to talk about the richest pla uh, richest man planet Earth have ever seen. Which well, that's not true. Well, that's not true because Saturn was a richest right. man. Right. Yes, you heard me right. The richest man whose fortune was estimated to be over $400 billion, or 310 billion euros. Did you guess? Who that was, if you thought Bill Gates, I'm sorry to disappoint you. It is the greatest emperor of Mali, Kakan Musa. Also written Kakan Musa, or Mansa Musa, or Mansa Musa, or Kakao Musa. Mm -hmm. Kakan Musa was the 10th Mansa, king of kings, or emperor of the great empire of Mali, mm -hmm. from 1312 to 1337. At the time of Musa's ascension to the throne... And I have to say this too, um, that spirit for him... For him to, to have that type of hegemony at that particular time, he was definitely, you know he would have to be one of the, the kings in the scriptures mm -hmm. through reincarnation. You know, now we don't know who that is, you know, I'm not going to step, step, step that far, right, right. you know, you know, but definitely, I mean, men, when men are born, that's something that you learn as an ancient man, and we, you know, we, the most high brings you back into the remembrance of the ancient ways, mm -hmm. you understand, men weren't just born and the ability to rise up and be kings and, and great kings and such if it wasn't already in that spiritual regeneration and their destiny mm -hmm. you know like these because it's, it's it takes certain charisma you know the charisma certain things like look at donald trump like uh, all these people that become president they, they got a certain thing about them that makes people want to fucking because you don't have to vote for the motherfucker mm -hmm. but why do you vote for them because you can't help it whatever it is that they got, they've had that, and there were Caesars in the past, there were kings in the past, and they come back with that same spirit that makes people say, you know what, that's, yeah, we're going to have him as, we cool with him being the king. Mm -hmm. You know, right? Let's lock it. Go back to, it says, uh, Kakam Musa was, let me see, was the 10th Mansa, king of kings, or emperor of the great emperor 
Empire Mali from 1312 to 1337. At the time of Musa's ascension to the throne, the Empire of Mali consisted of territories which had belonged to the Empire of Ghana mm. in Mali and surrounding areas. Mm -hmm. His name, Kakan Musa, or Kanga Musa, meant Musa's son of Kakao, Hamadal, in reference to his mother. In those days, the Madinka people were a matriarchal society. Kakan Musa is often referred to in literature as Mali Koi, Kakan Musa, Ganga Musa, and, and Lion of Mali. He had lots of titles, including Emir Ameli, Lord of the Mines of Wangara, Conqueror of Ganada, Fata uh, Jalan, also written Futa Jalan, and at, la and at least a dozen other areas. Come, he, read that last paragraph. Come. It's, uh, uh, this one right here. Mm -hmm. It said he took the Empire of Mali to its peak mm -hmm. from the Futa uh, Jalan to Agadez and Northern Niger, including the ancient Ghana mm -hmm. and Songhai Empire. But which we, we pulled that out last, Before, um, the Songhai, last um, um, part one. He established diplomatic relationships with Portugal, Morocco, Tunisia, and Egypt. Mm -hmm. His reign corresponds to the Golden Era of the Malian Empire. Wow, see that? And you talking about that type of energy, that type of charisma, that type of creativity, you know, that's talk, That's the nation of Israel. Uh, yeah. Let me get um, yeah. Matthews. You can't, that wasn't no Ishmaelite. No. You know what I'm saying? What's the other uh, picture on it? Can you kind of blow up that picture that they got for um, Mansa Musa? Let's see what they got. Let's see as high as I can get that. Um, this little picture here. See, they got them looking a little like lighter, like lighter. Almost like a like a, like a uh, Ishmael. Like yeah. they, I mean, that's what they would like for him to look like. But come right. on, man, the man was, you know, at worst. When I say at worst, meaning according to the knowledge of the world, at worst he was a quote unquote African. Right. But if you know the, uh, you know the nationality, and you're a spiritual man, you would know that was an Israelite. Right. No Hamite has got that type of creativity, man. No him might could be able to you talking about diplomatic he said he set up diplomatic uh 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 um uh what's that? It said there was a word, it said diplomatic relations. There you go. Come on man. Well you know <laughs> I think there's a modern more modern picture, of course. Still. But, look, he could pass for look over there, but see over there they got him looking like common a little bit. Right, right there with the Yeah. <laughs> He's a little lighter, you know, but but this is a Jake, man. I mean, yeah. you tell me, that ain't no hand but Hand mice don't look like that. Right. Hand mice don't look like that. Right. You feel me? Come on, man. Yeah. Straight up. You can pass with uh, any of the, uh, the, the three tribes. You got this. Yeah, now, now, now that's a fucking, you know, Elam or uh, Ishmael <laughs> with that nose. Yeah. But this this right there, that's it. That's, hey, listen, that's Israel. He could be, he, he could have been Judah, Benjamin, or Levi. You know, so this is our uh, Matthew chapter five. Uh, Matthew chapter five, uh, verse thirteen. It says, um, "Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is death. It is death forth, good for nothing, but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men." It, of course, when you you know when you say you know when the scripture says, "Ye are the salt of the earth." It's talking about who? It's, it's talking about the nation of Israel. But on a deep, of course, the deeper meaning, the deeper understanding is talking about the elect. You know, the elect out of the nation of Israel. And the fact that the elect have been, had laws, we had, we, we had laws to remove our salt, so to speak, meaning the truth. Because that's, it's the truth that gives us flavor, really. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not our ability to dance and jump high and shit like that. You know, that's just the minute, that's just like the 10%. Or what the of or what Israel has to offer the dancing the jumping the dunking and all that all the athletics but if you're talking about the spirituality the uh, the mental creativity um uh, spiritual power so on and so forth that's when the elect are are in the remembrance of of whom of Yahweh Bashim Yahushua and clearly the earth has been dying ever since what ever since you know the, the the really the elect was was in rulership. When I say rulership for the most part, I'm talking about during the, on the time of King David and King Solomon. That's when the earth was at its peak. You know, the earth was at its peak during that time. 
You know, and Dow, the earth is gonna go back to that to that stage when Yahweh shot, you know, comes back to deliver his elect, man. So uh yep, let me go back. Pull up that picture. Yep. Going back into uh going back into the books, so I can pull up that picture. It says uh uh, the black Jews, as uh, a matter of fact, I should have to court. Right. Um, going, continuing on to page 9, it says, The black Jews had an advantage over the African tribes. They carried their culture, history, laws, and written records with them. This assured them a constant pre precedent for the development of a higher social organization. See that? Higher social organization. We just, we just not like the Hamites, man. The Heavenly Father, let me see if I can get that right quick. Exodus, but I know where I'm going. Exodus 11. That's right, sir. Exodus 11 and 7. It says, um, <clears throat> it says, but against any of the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue against man or beast, that ye may know how that the Lord, Yahweh Bashim al Shah, do have put a difference between the Egyptians, which are the Hamites, and Israel, which are your so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans. We are always of a higher... That's why I remember the old posts where we always bring the, uh, the difference. We got the Hamites on mm -hmm. one side, and you got Mike, and, uh, um, you know, Michael Jackson, mm -hmm. and Mike Tyson, and uh, so on and so forth. The level of creativity is not even close, man. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the Lord made our spirits as Israelites special. Our spirits are not common like the other spirits. The other spirits I mean, were made common, mm -hmm. but our spirit was given an extra oomph, you know, and that's that extra oomph, that it factor that the heathens just don't have, man. Right. Yeah, brother. The scriptures talks about us being a peculiar people. That's right. But as a matter of fact, let me get there. Let me get, well, I'm going to get one of them. This is uh, 2 Samuel 7 and uh, 23. Uh, if you got it, brother, if you get there, you can read it for me. 2 Samuel 7 and 23. And what, let me see if it's all, yep. And what one nation in the earth is like thy people, even like Israel, whom the Most High went to redeem for a people to himself, and to make him a name, and to do for you great things and terrible, for thy land before thy people, which thou remember, which thou redeemest mm -hmm. to thee from Egypt, from the nations and their gods. That's right. Mm -hmm. And really, it's saying they're gods. It's yeah, a, it's they're a question, gods, right. Because it's a question. And really, it's a rhetorical question. Right. Where the Lord said, what nation is as great as the nation of Israel, man? You know, we are the, we've always said this. We are the greatest people in, in existence. Mm -hmm. When you're talking about humankind, so to speak. You know, living organisms. We are the greatest, most powerful, perfect organism on the planet. Everybody else has got imperfection. Look at Edom Esau. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have he doesn't have that Israelite spirit. And then he doesn't even have the melanin. Right. At least the heathens, they got yeah. the melanin, but they lack that it factor, that extra, that oomph in right. their spirit. Right. We are the complete, we are the complete form of, of what a living organism is supposed to be on earth. Right. The representation, the physical representation of, 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 of Yahweh Bashim El Shah in the heavens. We supposed to be. That's why the Lord said, "Let's make man uh, according to our image." We supposed to be a mirror image. Mm -hmm. The way we move on Earth is supposed to be a mirror image of how they're moving in the spirit. Mm -hmm. And only the nation of Israel was made to be able to do that, man. Go ahead. Up. It says we we'll bring that back up. It says. Um It says, because of the stability of the black Jewish culture, the Jews were not absorbed into the, what is that, auto, uh, 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 th Thanos population. Wow, I mm. need to look that word up. Yeah, try, 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 yeah, try yeah, to pull that see out. That. The first time I've ever seen that. You going to end them online? Come. What is it, auto... Talk. Thanos. Sound like Thanos at the end of shit. Talk Thanos, right? Native, Aboriginal, Indigenous. Or talk Thanos. Right. Do one more thing. Yeah. We could go to um, uh, dictionary. 
Mm. Dictionary of um, dot com. And then uh, paste that word in. So lock it. I'm gonna um, bring this up for the. Uh, I'll talk to this. I'll t okay, I'll talk to this. Mm. Okay. It's, it's the pronunciation of that word is uh, autochthonous, all right? Mm. If you can't hear it on the, uh, you know, the camera, it's autochthonous, all right? So if we, if we already bring out the definition, the Aboriginal, Indigenous, all right? We'll go back to this. Yeah, the, the, the Hamlets. Right. Indigenous uh, um, uh, of, of that particular uh, spot. Right. It could be, you know, either one of the sons of Ham, you know? Right. And it makes sense when you read it again, it says... Uh, the Jews were not absorbed into the autochthonous population, mm -hmm. the, you know, of that population. Right. It says, in fact, the Jews absorbed some of the native tribes. The Jews made use. Now, that was just saying. Keep reading. The Jews made use of every opportunity. They absorbed some of, some of the native yeah, tribes, right. therefore absorbing some of their what? Their customs. Mm -hmm. Now, this is Deuteronomy chapter 7. We're going to start at 1, of course. Uh, this is Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 1. It says, when the Lord, thy power, because remember, those are Hamite nations, right? Mm -hmm. And it just said they absorbed some of the native uh, 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 Tri uh, yeah. tribes yeah. Into, into themselves through what? Marriage, right? Because uh, this is Deut Deuteronomy 7 and 1. It says, when the Lord, thy power, shall bring thee into the land with it thou goest to possess it, and has cast out many nations before thee, the Hittites and the Girgashites and the Amorites and the Canaanites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than thou. And when the Lord thy power shall deliver them before thee, thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor show mercy unto them. Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter shall not, shall not, shall not thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son. For they will turn away thy son from following me, that they may serve other gods. So will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you and destroy thee suddenly. You see that? Mm -hmm. So that, but that's exactly what Israel did, right? They 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 started to merge with the Hamites. Why? Because you know niggas want to keep expanding. Mm -hmm. Right. Going back to that, it says. Uh, it says. Uh, the Jews made use of every opportunity. They were an industrious and skillful people. And the Jewish Ghanaian states were found kings, princes, governors, generals, secretaries, treasurers, revenue agents, judges, architects, mm. engineers, doctors, historians, language interpreters, mathematicians, jewelers, sculptors, mm. masons, carpenters, Painters of art, goldsmiths, leather workers, potters, armorers, saddlers, blacksmiths, agriculture, mm. etc. etc. And you know what that is? The, the, that, that's art, that's skill. Mm -hmm. and, and another word for our art or skill or craft is what? Guess what it is, brother? Tech. Tech. Yeah, you know, like the word technology. Mm -hmm. That's why, you know, that's when you read words, you have to understand technology doesn't necessarily mean being computer savvy. The word tech... The study of study of art. Right, right. Technology is the study of art or mm -hmm. skill or craft. It makes sense. So that's so when you when you know that, you're like, okay, technology has always existed on multiple levels. If you're able to understand the word, then you branch off of, oh, it's just computerized. Yeah, because well, 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 you got uh, the different types technology. of technician. Different. Speak on it. Different you types of technician. You got an HVAC technician, right? You have a uh, uh, satellite, you know, to put cable technicians. Mm -hmm. So it's a craftsman. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And you got the technology of the most high, which mm -hmm. comes with the, the spiritual power, the chariots, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. And then you got Esau's technology, which is computerized, mm -hmm. which really all it is is a sub, it's a, it's a sub, uh, a sub tech. Mm -hmm. Of the Most High, meaning it's a, it's a pseudo pseudo tech of the Most High, meaning he's trying to do what the Most High is doing, right. but he has to do it in, in a lesser way, in a weaker way, in a physical way, in a physical way, mm -hmm. 
You know, he has to deal with computerized, and it's just not coming out of this spirit. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why, like we all said, we, it comes down to the battle of the two images. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. Uh, keep going on that. All right. You pull that back up, and it says, uh, "The Black Hebrew Kings of Ghana had two titles: Kayamaga, Master of Gold, and Ghana War Chief." Professor Gabi says that 22 Hebrew kings reigned in Ghana before the Hegira in 622 AD. Right, let's go into Ghana. Let's go into uh, Ghana right now, as a matter of fact, because this is really the main part of it. Mm -hmm. you know, let's go pull up uh, Ghana as far as like images, you know, and also the tribes, of course. But let's get, let's get an image of, of Ghana see. before we get the image of the people of Ghana. Let's get just an image, a map. Top image of, of Ghana. Right, of course that's the that's the uh, the flag. Hey brother, you know what the you know what the name for Ghana is? What's the name? Look at look, go back, go back. Yeah, no, go to images, go to images, go to images. Now see that flag? Ah man, go yeah, to go to I just gotta go down. Yeah. Guess what they, because, you know, they have names for, for uh, like, um, like they have a soccer team, right? Mm -hmm. And their soccer team have, has a name, right? Now, their name is based on that flag, and it's based on that star. Mm -hmm. What is that star? It's not Mola. No, 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 just on the basic right. level, that's a, that's a right. black star. Right. Right, black they, star. they're Ghana, they actually, they're, they're called the Black Stars of Ghana. Right. That's their, like, you know, name, like. Like the black stars of Ghana, and that's where you get uh, 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 most definitely quality. I thought it was about to be something deeper the way you was, <laughs> was on the left hand side. No, 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 no. It, it wasn't that. Like, uh, it wasn't that deep. That's why I was like, just look at the color. But that's where you get most definitely quality. Black, black star. Black star. That's where they get that. Cause you know when niggas get into that research and Africa, Islam and all that, and that's where they get that. The black stars of Ghana. So you know, a little stuff, so. <laughs> <laughs> it's all through the spirit, brother. The scripture said, "Be not ignorant of anything." Yeah. You just fall up, great. You got me on that one, brother, with the water. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, look at that. Wow, ah, wow, okay. Well, yeah, those well, are. I don't think that they're. Do I have like a can, map? Canadian. Oh, there you go. There's a map right there. Look, click on that. That right there. Yep. Yeah, pull that up and embolden that image, workshop. Wow, so what are some of those names? Because I can't see from it. Bogotana, Tonga, the cities, Tamale, Sunyani, Kamasi, Kor Fudu, Ho. What is that? It looks like it's two C's. Accra. Uh, oh, Aqua. I think Aqua is the capital. Aqua? Okay. Yeah, I think it's the capital. I think I, I, it's, it's a word I've heard before when it comes to when it comes to Ghana. Cape Coast and uh, Sekondi to Karate. You know, it's a lot if I'm pronouncing it wrong. I can't. All right, go to, uh, go to Wikipedia, brother, and let's, let's, let's look up, let's read a little bit about Ghana, and then we're going to get the, um, the different tribes in Ghana. It's Ghana, officially the Republic of Ghana is a unitary presidential constitutional democracy located along the Gulf of Guinea and Atlantic Ocean in the sub-region of West Africa, spanning a land mass of 238,535 kilometers. Ghana is bordered by the Ivory Coast in the west, mm -hmm. Burkina Faso in the north, mm -hmm. Togo in the east, and the Gulf of Guinea on the Atl and Atlantic Ocean in the south. Mm -hmm. Ghana means warrior king mm. in the Sonike language. Wow. Soninke language, right. Wow, warrior king. Now, mm -hmm. read, read the next uh, a paragraph, Raksha. It says, the first permanent state in the territory of present-day Ghana dates back to the 11th century. Numerous kingdoms and empires emerged over the centuries, of which the most powerful was the kingdom of Ashanti. Right, so that's one of the tribes, Ashanti. We definitely gonna look that up. Finish that paragraph and then go back and click on Ashanti. It says, beginning in the 15th century, numerous European powers 
contested the area for trading rights, with the British ultimately establishing control of the coast by the late 19th century. Following over a century of native resistance, mm -hmm. Ghana's current borders were established by the 1900s as the British Gold Coast. It became independent of the United Kingdom on 6 March 1957. Come on. So now let's look up the Ashanti, the Kingdom of Ashanti. Just read the first paragraph and we're going to look at the Ashanti people. The Ashanti Empire, also Ashanti, was an Akan Empire. Oh, you know a lot of Jakes got that name, Ashanti. I know Ashanti. this football player, Ashanti Samuel. Mm. He used to be on um, cornerback in, in, in the NFL. It said it was an Akan Empire and Kingdom in what is now modern-day Ghana from 1670 to 1957. The Ashanti Empire expanded from Ashanti to include the Brong, Ahafo region, central region, eastern region, greater Accra region, and western region of present-day Ghana. The Ashanti benefited from earlier firearm adoption. Mm -hmm. Combined with effective strategy, they fashioned an empire that stretched from central Ghana to the present-day Ivory Coast. Due to the empire's military prowess, wealth, uh, wealth, architecture, sophisticated hierarchy, and culture, the Ashanti Empire, Salaki, the Ashanti Kingdom, has been extensively studied and has more his historiographies by European, pri primarily British authors, than any other indigenous culture of sub-Saharan Africa. Ah. Yeah, but so let's look up, um, because it, it gave us the meaning of Ashanti. So, no, it didn't give it It just meaning. said Ashanti, but it doesn't. Right, it doesn't. Yeah, just uh -huh. look at the Ashanti people. Because, you know, I remember there was this, this, the, um, this, um, this, uh, 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 you know how we got the signs of the tribe. Mm -hmm. There was this one sign that I had seen with, I don't know who broke it down, but, like, they had, like, for Judah, it'd be like Ashanti, and they have this tribe, be Mandingo, and all that. I was like, whoa. Let me to do that. You know, I was like, man, you know. Hmm. There you go, the Ashanti people. Wow, you see that? Yeah, Neil Long is Neil a Long. You know what, you're right. That means he did her, 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 um, her DNA, mm -hmm. and it went back to the Ashanti people. And you can see, it's def definitely, you can see a lot of uh, Benjamin, a lot of Levi. You can see, you know, Judah in the mix. You know, it seems like it's heavy Benjamin, in my, you know, humble opinion, to the spirit. A mixture, a mixture, of course, of the three tribes, because mm -hmm. most chicks you talking about a slavery up, up here in America, I mean, a lot of Jakes came from Ghana, man. Right. They had places where you could still go over there and see, like, the edges of Ghana where they were being, you know, rounded up and changed. Mm -hmm. So those are our people, man. Now, of course, in the midst, you got those hand mites. Right. Right. Of course. Yeah, you know, like, come on, man. But for the most part, those are Israelites scattered across the four winds. I mean, that's, and that's undeniable truth, man. That's undeniable truth. You just got to deal with it, you know? I mean, look at this guy. He looks like Dr. Savior. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> you know? I know, right? All right. Is she uh, going back to... All right. Going back to this. It says... Uh... Read down. It says, um, I got a preset, but let me yep. see if I can bring this up. Uh, 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 hold on, so I can. Okay, um, Isaiah 11, of course. The outcast? Yeah, Isaiah 11 and 11. You read so, that, Isaiah 11 verse 11 And it shall come to pass in that day That the Lord shall set his hand again the second time To recover the remnant of his people Which shall be left from Assyria And from Egypt And from Pathros And from Cush And from Elam And from Shinar mm -hmm. And from Hamath And from the islands of the sea That's right So it's talking about the nation of Israel The elect You know because the Lord really, really Like I said we Us men of the Lord All we doing We doing the bidding 
of Yahweh Shah, of Yahweh Bashem El Shah. And the Lord said to be like minded. So if you what what does that mean to be like minded? Whatever Yahweh Shah believes in, we gotta believe the same way. And this is how Yahweh Shah feels about the elect. This is our Wisdom of Solomon chapter three. Wisdom of Solomon chapter three was nine. I always love to bring this scripture. Because it always drives up the point that we a great millstone start with our apostles and elders always bring forth. That's why we don't waste our time on dudes that don't want to hear it. If you don't want to hear it, if this doesn't match with your spirit, hey man, just keep keep pushing, man. You know what I'm saying? Keep pushing and getting into what you want to do, man. Right? Uh, this is Wisdom of Solomon chapter 3 verse 9. It says, They that put their trust in him, the him right there is Yahweh Shah. It says, They that put their trust in him shall understand the truth. And such as be faithful in love shall abide with him. What is the love? The, uh, the love of Yahweh, the love, which, which at this point you must know what love is. Mm -hmm. You know, of course we know love to be the keeping of the, keeping right. of the commandments. But it's even a greater love. What's even a greater love in that? Uh, Ephesians 3.19. You know, because we know we're not going to be saved by the law, statutes, and commandments. So that means, although love is through the keeping of the law, statutes, and commandments, there's even a greater love in that. And what is it? It's Ephesians 3.19. You got it, brother. And to know the love of Yahweh. We started, uh, Baksha, started on... Uh, 17 on that 19. Ephesians 3 is 17. That Hamashiach may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and to know the love of Yahushai which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of the Most High. See that? That's the complete love. Mm -hmm. The fullness of Yahweh is the love of Yahweh Shai, which is the passing of the knowledge. Mm -hmm. So we got the knowledge, we can't hide it. We got to pass the knowledge. Mm -hmm. That love is more powerful than that love of passing knowledge. And I'm just being through spirit. is more powerful than your ability to have kept the Sabbath yesterday. Mm -hmm. If you want to wait, because you got to weigh everything in the balance, right? Because the Lord speaks about just weights. If you kept if a man who kept the Sabbath today... Of course, it's not the Sabbath, not today. But if a man, if the Sabbath was was today, and a man kept the Sabbath, one, mm -hmm. one Israelite kept the Sabbath. But in the same day, one Israelite taught another Israelite into remembrance of his nationality. Oh, yeah. What man has done a greater deed in the eyes of the Lord? Right. It's obvious. Right. It's obvious. And guess what? That man, as he, as he, as he, through the Spirit of the Lord, was able to preach the word and pass the knowledge. Guess what? He might have um. He might have been thirsty, or he might have been hungry and bought something to eat. Normally, you ain't supposed to do that according to the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. But the scripture said, "Don't be over, over righteous much." No, sure. Maybe he needed, maybe he needed a little something in his stomach, so he had to purchase something, right? Which is the, the breaking, the technical breaking of that of the, the the law of the Sabbath. But that was just so that he could go and preach the word. Guess what? The Lord is happy. Well, look, I mean, brothers have fringes on their garments, and some of the fringes are different materials than the actual garment. That's right. You know? That's right. But are we not still keeping the commandments? That's right. We're doing it. You know, we're out there, we're trying with the fringes, you know? That's right. So in Wisdom of Simon, chapter 3, verse 9, it says, They that put their trust in them shall understand the truth, and such as be faithful in love shall abide with them. For grace and mercy is to his saints, and he has cared for his elect. Well, that's the Yahweh Shah. It says, uh, uh, it says, Davidson makes mention of the Tariq El Fatak, history of the researcher, which says that Kumba had been the capital of the vast country of the Kayamaga, while the Tariq and Sudan states that Kuyamaga had been the name of the first king of this country. Mm. It is apparent that all the kings of Ghana were called by the title Kuyamaga. And concerning Kumbai, the ancient capital of Ghana, it was located in the southern part of the present country of Mali. During the Middle Ages, um, the name Ghana was not used to designate the country. Right, I mean, you look at the map, you can clearly see that Ghana and Mali 
used to be just a big mass, a big a big uh, land mass, mm -hmm. right? And then later on was separated and became Mali and Ghana. Mm -hmm. But that whole area was ruled by Mansa Musa, which was an Israelite. Mm -hmm. right? It said, uh, during the Middle Ages, the name Ghana was not used to designate the country. See that? That's what you said, right? Because mm -hmm. it was, Mali was the thing. Yeah, you know, go ahead. The name of this country was Okar, and Ghana was just the title of its kings. Mm. Having what like warrior king? Yep, warrior king. Having cognizance of this fact indicates the greatness and splendor of those kings, because after the decline of the Zad dynasty, men began to call this country after the title of its kings, which is Ghana, and I and I shall do the same. You know, we're talking about the right. writer, and right. I should do the same. In the 14th century, a Muslim writer named Ibn Battuta wrote about the women in one of the cities of Ghana. He found the women of Walata of surpassing beauty, and he should have known what he was talking about because he had traveled widely. Uh oh. Mm -hmm. Uh oh. What woman are those? Yep. Come it on, was. brother. You know we got to get uh, Judith. Yep. You got? Can we pull that up, brother? Yes, uh, when this is specifically the part where the the heathens were amazed at at, 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 at beauty. Can't quite remember exactly where it is, but I have a precept in the meantime. This is um. This is Exodus chapter one, and uh, like it. this is Exodus. This is Exodus chapter 1, verse 18, it says, And the king of Egypt called for the midwives and said unto them, Why have ye done this thing? And have saved the men, the men, children alive. And the midwives, the Hebrew midwives, right? The midwives said unto Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not as the Egyptian women, for they are lively and are delivered ere the midwives come in unto them. I mean, basically, they're lively. They just... Cut from a different cloth, man. The Israelite, listen, you gotta understand, man. The Israelite woman that she is right now, man. The so-called black women, the so-called Hispanic, so-called Native American women, they are nowhere near where they're supposed to be, man. You talking about physically, mentally, and spiritually. Our women are at the very bottom, but they still, you would still see gleamer. You would still see instances where you like, good God, like if these people were right, mm -hmm. you know, what would they look like? You look at our people back in the 70s. Look at Judah back in the 70s, right? You had the soul train. Just that, that was a glimpse of, of, of wanting. And remember, the fro, having a fro, that's just one of our many looks. Yeah. Not, every, not every brother is going to have the fro at, at, in, in the same time. Sometimes sometime a brother's going to have the fro. Sometimes a brother's going to have the lock. You know, because it's, it's, according to the scripture, you could do the lock. What's called a cornrow. Mm-hmm. So the Lord put the, the Lord created out the texture of our hair so we could do many things with it, except of course, you know, having it in a dead manner, which you call uh, uh, dreadlocks, or what I call deadlocks. Right. But our women, they're gonna have different hairstyles. That their hair texture is made that way. You know what I'm saying? So right now, hey brothers, we waiting for the world to come because in the world to come, the we I'm sitting here, I don't even know how our women gonna look like. But you, did you find it? Yeah, I, I found one of them. Con, There's yeah, a couple of them. I found one of them. It says... Uh, Just bring a few of them, brother. The, like, one or two. Uh, this is Judith. What is this? Uh, Judith. Is it 11? No, 10. Salaki. In Judith 10, in verse uh, 14, it says, uh, Now when the men heard her words and beheld her countenance, they wondered greatly at her beauty. They said unto her, well, that was one where they wondered mm -hmm. at, her, uh, at her beauty. Let me see.
that. It should be there now. Yeah. So long. Yeah. It should be there now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we good. All right. Yeah, that's Satan. Of course. Yeah, it be there now. All right. We good. <laughs> that's Satan. All right. All right. All right. Yeah, brother. Um, let's go back. All right, continue, continuing on in the book. I'm just going to go on the book. It says, uh, in the in page 91, it says... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I, so like I got yep. to read that part again because I want to bring this precept. Which part? Oh, the, right. beauty, the beauty of the woman. Oh, well, it's locked. Uh, no, no, no. I'm saying in, in Babylon, in, in Babylon Timber 2, it says the woman was beautiful. Two women. He okay. Uh, it says he found the women of Walata of surpassing beauty, uh, and he should have known what he was talking about because he had traveled widely. Moreover, he found another fact astounding: the women were given more respect than the men, and the males did not express any resentment or jealousy. Right. Of course, that sounds like Israel, right? Yeah. I mean, the, does, doesn't off. it? Yeah, doesn't the Israelite women get more uh, respect than the men yeah. in, in America? When the Israelite woman opens up her mouth, everybody just quiet. You know, everybody, you see, when you see the black woman arguing in the store somewhere, everybody just quiet, like, oh, shit, oh, shit, it's about to go down. Or they just be like, oh, shit, I hope she just leaves. But as soon as the Israelite man, as soon as you elevate your voice, now everybody's like, well, you got to call the police. Or all of a sudden, other men will step up to you and be like, yo, what's up, man, what's wrong with you? So why? Because our men, are all, my women, are with, uh, uh, I regard it in a higher level, a higher esteem than us, which that's a curse, man. But I'm, I'm going to bring this out right quick. This is Genesis 12 and 1. It says, and it came to pass when he, uh, it's like it. Yeah, it says, yep. And it came to pass when he was come near to enter into Egypt, that he said unto Sarai, his wife, that's Abraham, Behold, now I know that thou art a fair woman to look upon. Right, right, right. You see that? Right. I'll read it again. Uh, Genesis 12 and 11 says, And it came to pass when he was come near to enter into Egypt, into Africa, right? He said that he said unto Sarai, his wife, Behold, now I know that thou art a fair woman to look upon. Therefore it shall come to pass when the, when the Egyptians shall see thee, they, that they shall say, This is his wife, and they will kill me, but they will save thee alive. And she was older at the time. That's the crazy part. She was an older woman at the time. They still desired her. That's how bad she was. So imagine how, you know, they're going to look at the kingdom. That's right. It says, verse 13, Say, I pray thee, thou art my sister, that it may be well with me for thy sake, and my soul shall live because of thee. And it came to pass that when Abram was coming to Egypt, the Egyptians, the Hamites, the Egyptians, the Africans, beheld the woman that she was very fair. Mm-hmm. Why? Because they compare, remember, a woman is beautiful compared to what you've seen before. Mm -hmm. So these Hamites seen Hamite women, and now when they put their eyes upon Sarah, they was like, whoa, what is this? Mm -hmm. But that's that's the Israelite woman. Now, she, she doesn't live up to those standards right now, but in the kingdom, she is going to be that and a bag of chips. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, mine is the bag of chips. That in the, in the past, you know, no, no, no. <laughs> that in the uh, um, lamp. And, uh, and, that's right. Yeah, and, 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 and the uh, uh, pomegranates. That's what pomegranate. I want to say. Pomegranates. Yeah, mm. yeah, 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 yeah. That's, you know, that's right. A bag of chips. <laughs> you know that's. You know, that's <laughs> I know. I'm, you know. <laughs> I know. I'm messing. Um, it says. Um, reading on, it says the women were given more respect than the men, and the males did not express any resentment or jealousy. Mm. The people did not trace their descent from a paternal head, but from their maternal brother. And that's, that's, that's off. off. That's off. It, and that's and you see that spirit here today because you got, 
You got a lot of our people. So, of course, most importantly, start with the tribe of Judah. A lot of brothers out here, man, just walking around with their mother's last names, man. You cannot, as a man, you cannot just get that numbers. Uh, one in, in 18. You, as a man, you cannot carry your, your mother's last name because your mother's last name is actually her father's last name. Her father, he's, he carries his own genes, his own sperm, his own generation. And his, the, her father's generation doesn't go through her. So there's no way she should keep that name and put that name upon her son because he is her son is not a descendant of her father. Go ahead, Doc. It's Numbers 1 and 18, and they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month. Mm -hmm. And they declared their pedigrees after their families by the house of their fathers, uh -huh. according to the number of the names from 20 years old and upward by their poles. Well, then I let you know the Queen of Heaven spirit is it's not something new. Right. It's something that has followed the nation of Israel from, for ages, going back to the book of Jeremiah, mm -hmm. with the Israelite women baking cake to the, uh, the Queen of Heaven. Mm -hmm. that, that spirit of Israelite men being weak and allowing our women to rule over us, man. Right. And it, it all really comes from Yahweh by Shem Yashah. It's part of the curses that right. came with the diaspora, mm -hmm. right? Is that what? Your, your woman shall, hey, the Lord said he's created a new he thing on, on the earth, and a woman shall compass a man. Why? Because that's a curse. It's not supposed to be like that, but that's what we get. That's what we get as Israelite men for what? For breaking the covenant that we have with Yahweh by Shem Yashah. But through, of course, the mercy, the grace of Yahweh, he sent us. Hopefully, let his son Yahweh Shah to bring his back into that covenant of manhood again, man. Mm -hmm. It starts with getting your balls back, man. Mm -hmm. And a lot of Israelites, dudes call themselves Israelites, even even in Great Millstone, man. They're hiding, right? They probably they probably cringe when we talking about rape. They trying to know, man. If you're still cringing about this rape thing, like I made a video about it, you're not a throwback. Mm -hmm. You know, I made a video about it. That I was that's a serious video. Like the reason why we don't cringe. When these things are brought upon us through the spirit, because we're throwbacks. Our, our souls and our spirits go back to ancient times, man. Mm -hmm. Right up. It says, um, going on, it says, um, the people did not trace their descent from a paternal head, but from their maternal brother. An individual bequeathed his legacy to his sister's sons. The material foundation of the Ghanaian state was based on an affluence of gold and iron. Mm. The use of iron in Africa, especially Ghana, revolutionized the social and military systems. El Zari stated that the Ghanaians fought many wars against their neighbors who did not use iron, but fought with bars of ebony. The Ghanaians could destroy their enemies because they fought with lances and swords. Mm. The kings Revenue, uh, revenue agents levied taxes on imports and exports and the medium of exchange was gold. Concerning the kingdom of Ghana, Joseph William writes, whatever may be thought of the more or less mythological traditions connected with the earliest Jews in North Africa, it is now practically an established fact that a Jewish nation, Jewish at least in faith and perhaps too in origin, Long held sway south of the Sahara. That's right. And it's talking about places like Mali and, and, and uh, yeah, Ghana. Yeah. And it's talking about, and this at least in faith. Faith, yeah. Well, guess what? Uh, go to, uh, can you pull up the At part? least in faith, yeah. Wait, let's go to, uh, we're going to finish with this. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's what's that, Second Ezra 1 and uh, tw uh, 35, where it says, I will go to a people that. Who is yeah, yes, city? yes, yes. Yep. This is uh, Second Ezra's one. Rocky Shah started on uh, Second Ezra's one and uh, Selakia, Selakia. Second Ezra's one started at 30, 35. Yes, yep. Um, Second Ezra's one. No, and you know what? Thirty. Started thirty-two. Brother. Thirty-two. Come. Yeah. It's, I yeah, it finished and then it stopped at um thirty-seven. Come, verse 32, I sent unto you my servants the prophets whom ye have taken and slain and torn their bodies in pieces. Right, because the Lord now, he's speaking to 
the circumcision. Mm -hmm. He's speaking to the Israelites that know that they're Israelites. Mm -hmm. the, the natural man, like it, like it speaks to. The natural man, the natural man is a Hebrew Israelite by nature. There's no such thing as a, a Hebrew Israelite by the, you know, uh, 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 what's that? The, you can't, it's, it's no such thing as uh, turning yourself into a right, uh, turning spiritual it, right, Israelite. That's right, turning yourself into a spiritual Israelite. Because you got to say it right. Mm. You know, because you got this spiritual man, which is an Israelite. Who has what? Who has received the spirit? Mm -hmm. And then you got the natural man, which is an Israelite who has not received the spirit. So the Lord right there, he's talking to the natural man. Go ahead. He says, I sent unto you my servants, the prophets, whom you have taken and slain and torn their bodies in pieces, whose blood I will require of your hand. Hand, saith the Lord. Thus saith the Almighty Lord, your house is desolate. I will cast you out as the wind of stubble, and your children shall not be fruitful. For they have despised my commandment and done this thing that is evil before me. What? Cast you out. Goes back to the scattering. Getting mm -hmm. kicked out of the land. That, that's the diaspora. Mm -hmm. You know, diaspora, we broke it down. What was it? Scattered abroad. Scattered Good. abroad. Scattered abroad. Go ahead. Your houses will I give to a people that shall come, was not having heard of me, yet shall believe me. What? That people right there is not talking about the heathens. Mm -hmm. That is talking about the Israelite foreigners. It says believe. That's right, because they have, that's right, believe. When it says believe, belief goes back to what? Faith, right? Faith, that's right. Now, pull up, right quick, pull up uh, Acts uh, 15 and, uh, and 8. I'm not sure. Acts 15 and 8. I think it's Acts, if I'm not mistaken. It's Acts uh, 12. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Acts 15 and 8, and the Most High which know of their hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Spirit, even as he did us, and put no difference between us and them. Right, put no difference between us and them. Who's the us and them? The us and them is talking about the the, the, uh, the Israelites who knew they were Israelites, mm -hmm. and then the Israelite foreigners, known as in the scriptures as Gentiles. Now, pull up right, well, no, keep reading, keep reading. Purifying their hearts through faith, Purifying. by faith. Purifying their hearts by faith. faith. Is that belief going back to uh second Nessus, right? That's right. Now go back, go to uh Job, go uh Job 13 and 1. Just type in Job 13 and 1. Because I bought this on the first epilogue, uh, uh and, and this is the mindset for dudes that want to reject um uh, um that want to reject the, 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 the Hebrew Israelite like foreigners, right? The Gentiles, this is their mindset. This is how they're looking at things boldly. Still coming out here calling themselves what? Hebrew Israelites, although they look like heathens. This is what they're telling you, man. Go ahead. Job 13 and 1. Lo, mine eye have seen all this. Mine ear have heard and understood it. Right. Regardless of where they are, this is what's happening to them. Mm -hmm. And this is what their spirit is telling us. So we, we, we can't discard them because they look like the other nations. Go ahead. What ye know, the same do I know also. Don't they know? Mm-hmm. We, we, we have to, we out here, you know, of course, in America, most, we got that, the, the standard look. But you see a brother, he, he looks like an Edomite. He knows what you know. Right. Go ahead. So I am not inferior unto you. And he's, and he's not inferior unto you. Mm -hmm. And you need to understand that, that he's not inferior unto you just because of his physical appearance and the location of his birth. That's right. Go ahead. Surely I will speak to the Almighty, and I desire to reason with them. And that's what they do. They call upon. They don't. They don't call upon. These brothers don't call upon us for mercy and acceptance. They call upon Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah. They see you good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Yeah. They don't say, "Oh, brothers in America, oh, please recognize us as Israelites." No, they know that the first thing is what is recognition from Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah. So as, as brothers, we need to acknowledge them and understand that they're not inferior to us. You know, they are Israelites as well, man. They've just been scattered, they're scattered spirits, and or especially if they're part of the election. Now let's go back, let's finish up Ezra. Uh, Ezra, it says, um, as Second Ezra 1 and verse uh, 35, Your houses will I give to a people that shall come, was not having heard of me, yet shall believe me, to whom I have shewed no signs, Yet they shall do that I commanded them. Mm -hmm. They have seen no prophets, yet they shall call their sins to remembrance and acknowledge them. Mm -hmm. I take the witness, the grace of the people to come, whose little ones rejoice in gladness. Mm -hmm. And though they have not seen me with bodily eyes, yet in spirit they believe the thing that I say. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. 
And that's exactly what's going on. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's going on. It's happening in the four corners of the earth, man. You know, and that's how we know. That's how we know. And today, of course, you know, it's part two of um, uh, the Jewish Empire of Ghana. We hit the, the Ashanti tribe, which we show the images. You could do some more research on that. You know what I'm saying? And read more about the Jewish ancestral uh, link to the Ashanti tribe. How they still keep some of the, a lot of the customs. What the Hebrew is like customs, man. Which, which the Ashanti tribe is not Hamites, by the way. Man. Nah, nah, nah. The, as um, old boy said, the Egyptian with the goddamn elephant trunk on the side of his head, he said the Ashanti tribe goes back to uh, nah. uh, Hamites. That's garbage, nah. man. Because the thing is, he probably went through the whole DNA thing. But mm -hmm. remember, the scripture said that Israel um, merged with some of the heathens. So amongst Ashanti, you do have heathens. Well, even then, the DNA. But still, but still. We're talking about the overwhelming majority of Israelites. Even then, you know, go ahead, go ahead. Sloppy, sloppy, no, sloppy. Say, no, I'm saying, even then, DNA is bullshit. It is, because it is. Uh, if DNA says, you know, we go back to, some people go back to Turkey, we have Israelites living in Turkey. That's right. But at the same time, uh, why doesn't DNA go back even further than that? Because we didn't, uh, where did we eventually come from? You all eventually came from a person, not the that's land. Right, that's right. So, that's right. They wasn't always in Turkey. You know, people, they migrated, they changed places, so That's the right. DNA is the gone. The DNA would not give, do you justice. That's mm -hmm. the reason why uh, Timothy, it was so the Timothy to stay away from genealogy. Yep. Because it won't do you justice. You just can't. It's a physical method of recognition. The Lord said recognition is a spiritual method, man. So um, basically, that was, that was about it. You know what I'm saying? Um, this concludes, of course, um, part two of... Um, What's that? Ghanaian, the Hebrew Israelite black diaspora, black. part two. Uh, the Black Jewish Empire of Ghana. Huh. This concludes it. And uh, of course, man, it's very edif edifying, man. We learn a whole lot. Like we tell y'all brothers, as well, as y'all learn it, we learn the same way. Yep. I just learned today, Ghana, man, warrior king. Mm -hmm. You know, there's more knowledge, more ammunition. Words you know? like autochthonous. Autochthonous. <laughs> yeah. And certain yeah. things, you know, now, this is the first time I've really read a lot about Masa Musa and you yeah. know I might read some more on him. Yeah. It's just acquiring more wisdom knowledge and understanding for stability and the more you know the more you get closer to your how about Shimon Shah, sure. plain sure. and simple. Sure. And uh, basically with that uh, of course we want to say Kaha La Yahweh oh, by Shem Yahweh Shah by Shem Mahabu Dash of course we want to give double honor our apostles errors the great millstone shall want salutation to all you sincere occupants of course the four wings pushing the super sincerity of heart. Uh, cause I'm a gun easy camp. So you're on our con and through the spirit power, y'all by Shimon Shah me a little willing. Uh next week, you know, we'll have a different uh title and um and a, a battle on the Timbuk too, because that's the reference. That's what we're going into, battle on the Timbuk too. Mm -hmm. So the spirit lead is wherever it leads us. It could be still Africa, but there's a lot of places like Spain, so we might be touching Europe now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The spirit is traveling, man, and we're happy to do this. You know, and hey, hopefully you brothers was edified, man, stay strong, stay, stay faithful, and I want to see y'all next week. Shalom.